Hi everyone, it's Rachel here from Stitched Up. I thought today that I would do a video on the seamstress tag. This was originally done by Holly Sews. I'll put a link to her down below. And a couple of people have already asked me if I will do this, so here goes. When and why did you start sewing? Okay, so I've been sewing since probably 2014. I originally started sewing then because my daughter at the time was 16, 15, 15? She was 15. And she wanted to, uh, she wanted me to basically sew a prom dress for her for her 16th prom at school. And basically I didn't have a clue. This was a year in advance. So what I thought I would do is learn to sew so that hopefully I could produce a really nice dress for her for a prom. Now, um, so I started sewing in the summer of 2014. I think the first thing that I made was the Coco by Tilly and the Buttons. I bought some, it was actually a viscose jersey. So um, you can imagine that it was a little bit of a disaster. I wasn't really sure at the time of pattern adjustments etc so I made the cocoa dress and I really really love this pattern in the right fabric and with the right adjustments I think it's a fabulous pattern but I made it in a stripe a broad stripe viscose jersey and my pattern matching was really good but I made the funnel neck version and for those of you that aren't aware viscose jersey in the funnel neck the funnel neck just won't stand up at all so that didn't work um, but still, I really love the dress. It was a little bit on the short side. As I said before, I'm quite tall and the cocoa was very short on me. So yeah, I've made it since then and obviously made it longer and I really do like it. It's a lovely dress just to throw on, especially this time of year. But, um, but yeah, that was the first thing I made. And Basically, over the next few months, I spent some time making various different things, some successes, some not so successful for various reasons, and then eventually made the prom dress that my daughter wore to her prom. I'll put a little picture of it in here so you can have a look and see. Um, but I was really, really proud of it. I was very scared. It was a bit of a mashup of a couple of different patterns, one being a birder pattern. Um, I got lots of advice from a really lovely shop um, called Threadmill Fabrics, which is in South Yorkshire, which is not too far from where I live. And the lady who ran that shop was really, really good. She gave me lots of advice. We bought the fabric from there. And um, the dress, while not perfect, worked out really well. My daughter loved it. She looked absolutely stunning on the night. And yeah, so that's why. Okay, next question. What is your favourite or proudest make? Um, well, again, I guess it has to be the prom dress that I made for my daughter. Um, it was quite in depth and yeah, there's, there's, that's it basically. Um, what is my most disastrous make? Hmm. Now then, that's going to take some thinking about. I'll come back to that one. Where is your favourite place to go fabric shopping? Okay, um, I do do a lot of shopping online. I think there's some great fabrics that you can get online and it's just convenient. I work Monday to Friday um, beyond eight till five. So there's absolutely no chance that I can get to do some fabric shopping during the week unless it's online. But I do love Fabworks. Um, Fabworks is a big fabric mill shop that is based in Dewsbury, which is in West Yorkshire. That is about 40 minutes from where I live. So, and they are open on Saturday. So I, if I can fit it in, I will sometimes go on a Saturday and yeah, spend a fortune in there really. They sell some fabulous stuff and it's really reasonably priced. So yeah, I do love Fabworks. Um, what is my most used pattern? I don't think I have one if I'm honest. I'm just looking at what my hair's doing here actually, but hey ho, okay. Um, yeah, I don't think I have a most used pattern. I have a lot of patterns and I'll probably do a bit of a um, look through my patterns at some point. Um, but I tend to, usually make 
a pattern probably once or twice at the most. I don't like lots of repetition of clothes. Um, I'm, I'm usually sort of wanting to do one thing and then get that done and then move on to the next thing. So a lot of my patterns I will, won't will repeat necessarily. Having said that, um, the top that I'm wearing now, which is the Grain Line Linden, um, I've made this three times now and I think that it's just great for winter just to throw on with a pair of leggings or jeans and I do really love this for winter. Um, in the summer I do like the True Bias Ogden Cami. I've made that a couple of times, in fact I think I've made it three times. I only bought that earlier this year and I just think it's really versatile. Um, I wore it a lot over the summer and I think think I'm thinking about making a velvet version actually for um, over the party season but haven't quite decided yet. Um, your most dreaded sewing task is, oh gosh this has to be buttonholes, I absolutely detest doing buttonholes. Um, I have a Genome sewing machine, is it Genome? 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 Oh, I'm not sure but anyway I have a Genome sewing machine and I um, I love it, it's fabulous, but it has an automatic buttonholer and I just cannot get the hang of it at all. Um, I always do test buttonholes on scrap fabric first, but it still ends up where I am, I just tend to make a mess of it. Um, so I get myself in a bit of a panic. Um, I can feel myself getting really clammy and anxious when I'm having to do buttonholes and yeah, I don't like them at all. Trying to do them in knit fabric, I made a knit, I think it's the name, is it the named Esme cardigan? Mm, gosh, I can't remember. But anyway, I, um, yeah, I made that cardigan and that's supposed to have buttonholes in it and there was just absolutely no way that my sewing machine would handle buttonholes in knit fabric. Even with stabiliser on, no matter what I did, it just won't work. So that cardigan hasn't got any fastenings on it at all, but it looks fine. So yeah, buttonholes are my absolute sewing nemesis. Um, hate them, absolutely hate them. Um, my favourite sewing task, I would say, ugh. gosh, now then, I don't know actually. I think it probably has to be when you've finished and you try it on and it fits and you look at yourself in the mirror and think, wow, I've made that. I think for me, especially because I'm tall, a lot of ready to wear clothes don't fit me properly or, um, you know, because the, the arms tend to not be long enough or I've got quite broad shoulders so things will pull across the back, things will be quite short. So to be able to actually just have a finished garment that fits me properly is the right length everywhere. Um, that And knowing that I've made that out of a flat piece of material is just, yeah, that's quite satisfying. What is your favourite sewing entertainment. Um, I watch a lot of other YouTube videos. I used to, when I first started sewing, I would read a lot of tutorials, read a lot of blogs. The blogging seemed to be the thing um, a few years ago and that slowly seems to be moving more into YouTubing. So I, I'm sort of moving with that, I guess. I think some of the bloggers that I used to watch a lot um, either aren't blogging anymore at all or just not doing it as often as what they used to. So, um, and some people have switched to YouTubing, so I'm tending to watch a lot of vlogs, um, which is why I've got involved in it myself. Um, I do like Instagram as well. I think that's great for that instantaneous, seeing what somebody's doing. Um, but I think YouTube's great from just having a, a half hour with a cup of tea so you can sit and watch what people have been doing or if you want to look at something more in depth whether it's a tutorial to teach you how to do something I think there's some fantastic resources on YouTube as well so I tend to use that a lot. Printed or PDF? It's probably, um, I absolutely love printed patterns I think um, I've got a lot of the big four patterns I've got quite a few indie patterns but I would say my indie patterns tend to be more PDF 
Um, I do like the instant gratification of a PDF so that on an afternoon or an evening if I think I want to I want to make something tonight and I see it on the internet I can just buy it, print it out straight away, stick it together and I'm away. Um, printed patterns obviously you've got to wait for the post to come. Where I live it's quite rural so there aren't really any shops locally to me where I can just go and buy a printed pattern so I'm generally waiting a few days if I want to buy a printed pattern. Um, but having said that I do think the indie patterns, their printed packaging is just absolutely gorgeous and I do get sucked in by pretty packaging as I'm sure I'm not alone there. And um, yeah so I think it's probably a PDF Mm, yeah okay um, and what sewing machine do you use yeah well I've mentioned that I have a genome it is a oh gosh now then I'm not quite sure of the model it's an SMD I got it from sewing machines direct which are an online company with a really good reputation and I have to vouch for their reputation I'll put a link to them down below um, but basically I mentioned earlier that I've had problems with buttonholes and when I've rung them up for advice, they're brilliant. They ring you back. They will talk. the The after sales service is just second to none. Um, so they've talked me through various things whenever I've had any trouble. Um, it's a bit of a workhorse, um, but I absolutely love it. It's got an automatic needle threader on it, an automatic four step button holder, as I've mentioned. Which it's I know that it's me that's not using it properly, not the machine. Um, it's not got. It is computerized, but it's not. Um, and all singing, all dancing, thousands of different stitches on there. It's probably got about 30 different stitches, but most of them I don't use. I would say that the ones I use the most are the straight stitch. It does have a lightning stitch for the for the stretch fabrics and um, zigzag. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And um, yeah, they're about. That's about it, really. What I use. So, um, but it's great. It's a real little work workhorse. I've had it since. Um, since I started sewing a few years ago and um, it's never let me down yet. Um, I do also have a vintage Singer 201, I think it's a 201k, I think, and um, yeah that's a real workhorse. It's great for um, using really heavy heavy duty fabrics, my genome, although it will sew through them it struggles a little bit whereas the, the vintage Singer just flies through it. The stitch definition on that thing is amazing. Um, but yeah, that only does straight stitch, um, but I will use that if I want. I used it on my daughter's prom dress actually because I wanted some really nice stitching on there. And it is, it's beautiful, beautiful stitching. I'm not a fan, fan of the newer Singer machines, but I do think the vintage ones, uh, you just can't beat them. And do you have any other hobbies? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I am a runner and uh, when I'm not sewing and not working I do like to go running. Um, I've been running since my daughter was born 18 years ago and um, yeah it's um, I've initially I did it for weight control after I'd had my daughter but then quickly developed a real love for it and found that I would go running just for my for my mental health I guess and to clear my mind, have that time to myself with young children growing up and um, yeah I absolutely love it. Um, it means I can eat cake as well which is always a bonus. So uh, so yeah I go running. Um, I also like baking. I do like baking and I will bake my own bread as well. Not so much these days because as I say I'm working and when I'm not working I'm either running or sewing but, um, but yeah I enjoy baking as well so Okay, and going back to the question that I missed out earlier, what is my most disastrous make? I don't think that I have a single disastrous make. I think there have been a few, a few cases where, actually, thinking about it, it was something that I did not so long back. There was, um, back in the summer, when the off-the-shoulder tops were all the trend, and I wanted to make a dress version, and I didn't have a pattern for quite the style of top that I wanted, so I thought I'm just going to make my own. So I wanted an off the shoulder, but the, the, the sort of flounce to the front just more or less come to my elbows. And I couldn't find a pattern that I um, that sort of matched what I wanted, so I thought I would just have a go at making my own. 
and um, initially it worked out okay, but then when I was putting the elastic around the, the sort of flounce that goes over your shoulders, it was fraying and just wouldn't work. And then when I tried it on, I realized there wasn't enough fabric for the flounce, so it was tighter than I expected. And yeah, that ended up going in the bin. Um, I do think that no matter how long you've been sewing, there's always gonna be disastrous makes. Um, you're learning all the time, things aren't gonna go well all the time and it's yeah it's just one of those things that you're going to learn lifelong as you as you uh, as you progress really some things will go well some things won't um but you know it's all part of the fun okay so that's me so thanks for um asking me to do this i hope it's been interesting um, I'm currently working on a couple of other vlogs which will be out soon and um, yeah, I will catch up with you guys later. Bye!